Welcome to the Scent of Beauty. My name is Susan, and this video is titled Amendments. What is Indispensable? Part 3. Part 1 uh, Amendments, the initial proposal. Uh, part 2 Amendments, do you recognize the initial proposal? And I suggest if you haven't watched, if you haven't listened to part one and two, that you listen to those videos and then you come back. These videos help us to take a look at psychodynamics in relationships through a bicameral concept where I needed two branches that are operating and being governed under one system, one authority. And Congress was able to help in this area. A bill is presented by a sponsor from the House of Representatives or from the Senate. And then it's co-sponsored. And in relationship, a, a, a proposal is made initially and there has to be a backer if we're going to talk about interpersonal relationships and what occurs when there are amendments that happens that are non-germane that has nothing to do with the pro the uh, proposal, the bill, the idea. What occurs? What keeps that um, bill or proposal in operation? That's what I was taking a look at, and that's what I'm taking uh, an observational um, look at. And so we're going to continue. Congress has the best procedure in regards to bills, in my, in my view, uh, the idea or proposal. If the bill is going to die, it is returned to the house of origin. And again, so the house of origin decide if the bill dies or if they are going to take further actions. This happens when the allotted time calls for a determination or is it going to be dissolved? When a bill returns to its or origin, it is not personally marked it can be left on the table. When the sponsor that initiate the bill, the proposal decide to let it die, it dies. And this helped to understand that, that when a proposal, when a proposal is in a perpetual, perpetual state of square one, there needs to be an assessment. When this occurs in interpersonal relationships, the backer, the co-sponsor, the one that is in the position of always uh, being the runner of another person's agenda, when the sponsor, if the sponsor instantly divests the passion can go into a state of shock. And if you listen to the other video, the passion is the desire. Our emotions and feelings can be traumatized. And trauma is defined as a deeply distressing or disturbing experience, a wound. So an individual are able to function sometimes on a mental level um, as far as doing these mundane uh, duties. No interruption necessarily in the daily functioning, but the feelings and emotion and desire with the wound can have a great, could be impacted greatly. And so I wanted to give some antonyms for passion. Passion, the antonyms are, some of the antonyms are coolness, indifference, 
frigidity, coldness, iciness, etc. Apathy, I want to mention that one also. And those are indications that the passion within that individual has become ill. What is indispensable? For those who have watched my videos, the answer is easy. I am. You are indispensable. And based on the answer, it would seem the question is grammatically incorrect, right? Because the answer should be, I am, you are. Based on the question, though, if you listen to the question, the question would be written, who is indispensable? But I said, what is in indispensable? And again, if I had said, who is indispensable? The answer, a lot of the time, people would gleefully say, I am, you are. But that's an idea. Who is based on a noun. But I want us to take a look at our passion, our feelings. So it's not who, it's what. Our power and the force that drive us, that's indispensable. There is the two branch, the psyche and the dynamics. And it's equally imperative to our internal locus, our self-governing, for them to cooperate in our best interests. The word convert, I want to take a look at that. To convert, right, is to cause a change in form, character, and, or function. The idea to change the form, right, we, we learned a, lo a lot of the times I would he hear that the form is to, you know, I want to become a better person or in some cases persona or the character. I want to have better character traits, commendable attributes, and that's more in the feedback realm. But this is not based on an idea, but the function that need to be converted is a favorable, having a favorable sensation within ourselves. The passion within the internal world that we live in. Crawling out of one's skin is a symptom of what I'm talking about. When our feelings and emotion and desires are not operating at its full potential. And it's as equal, it's an equal representative Focusing on the dynamics has already c contributed to the effectiveness of feelings, emotion, and desires. When we are giving a proposal, if it's continually get amended over and over again, and our passion is driven to get it back to its original state, then we start to upset our own biology, our own system of operation to try to fix an external issue, a problem that has been rewritten by another individual. But we try to use it to calm our feelings, our emotion, and our desire to bring it back to a place of promise. And that's what it is, trying to get back to the place of the initial promise to find that comfort. I mentioned David Hume in uh, part two, but David Hume helps us to have a more in-depth reason for the statement you know, to gain insight on false feelings based on fringed idea when it becomes insincere, the promise that was initially presented. When the 
impression of reflection, it's false. It doesn't line up with what was proposed when the proposal no longer exists. The origin of the content is no longer visible viable you could no longer buy into it however the feelings are still invested that is not from the sponsor those feelings are exuded by the co-sponsor the backer which can be an entirely different message david hume uh, he was he was uh, he was born in in seventeen eleven, uh, and he died seventeen seventy six. Right, he saw this without the technological advancement we have today. We have functional magnetic resonance imaging. It's called um, F FMR the language of our emotions communicating on a nonverbal level, emotions and mind activity, how it coincide. That's why I go back again and I say it in majority of my, my videos, we are beautiful internally. Our being is so amazing and it speaks to us and it speaks for us. And David Hume heard it in the 18th century when others focused on ideas. He heard feelings. He heard the passion within us. In my book, he's exceptional. He dared to tread off the beaten path of his colleagues. He centered his lens on this subject matter. And we get a more meticulous scope into the driving force of feelings. The co-sponsor proved that after reason has, has dissipated, feelings and emotions keep going and moving, purely operating on the initial sensation. So while the other scholars focus on the mind, his focal point was on what forged ahead of the mind. And that, and then I started thinking about a locomotive. The Latin root for loco from a place, motive, uh, in Latin, it's moving. And I call it the loco behind the motion, getting familiar with the passion, the drive. A locomotive have the steam engine, it's boiler, and firebox, it has the operator. The entire passion is the charge that pulled the freight. So, and that's what occurs when the proposal is gone and it's behind that the co-sponsor is so busy and we see in lo locomotive, there's a lot of steam and a lot of fire, but it doesn't have a lot of speed. And over the years, the locomotive, the design changed a little more speed, but the passion remained the same. High pressure power, fast moving parts, which is exhausting just watching it and not even being a contributor, but just watching how much effort is put in for it to move and not really at a fast speed, just a little bit more. Impression reflection is troublesome if the passion has no foresight. The amendments have caused imperception. Not all dilemmas can be corrected through reason. When a sponsor have gained the ability to slow churn themselves into an enigma, the co-sponsor is trapped in solving a mysterious person, puzzling, difficult to understand a subject matter. And David Hume explained why a co-sponsor continued to hold up the initial proposal, the copy taken by the mine, it 
returns upon the soul, as David Hume explained. Even when the idea, the reason stopped being evident. Think about it. Welcome to the Santos Beauty. I'm going to conclude with part four.